I have tested many AI tools and honestly, a lot of them are not that useful when it comes to actual client work. But this one, this one is different. It's literally what I use every day. And if you see what it's capable of doing, you will love it too. In this video, I'll share my top five Prom AI tricks I use for my clients on a daily basis. And the first one is really, really cool. And the first tip is how to turn a summer image like this one into a winter scene in just a couple of minutes. We are going to use a tool called Prom AI, which is today's sponsor. So here we have Prom AI. We're going to first start with Creative Fusion. So this is what will allow us to take an image as a reference for our render. And so we have here my render. As you can see, I just drag and drop the image here and I'm going to select the style. So here we have female, male, children, animals, and also landscape architecture. So these are already some ready to use references that, that you can add to your project. But in my case, I'm going to use here custom. I already have a snow image that I like and I want to use as a reference. So I just click it. And now on the render mode, you have many options, but I'm going to go with the one precise. As for the style intensity, it's how much freedom you want the AI to have in creative freedom. So I'm just gonna leave it in the middle and click generate. And so here are some results. As you can see, this is the first one in which we didn't add any prompts. And it's already looking quite good, as you can see, replacing the vegetation with snow. Here we have another one. Of course, it, it changed the house as well, but don't worry about that, we'll fix this later. So now if you over the image, you can go here on the bottom and click Remix. So we're going to click on this T and here on the something you want, it's the prompt. Let's add a prompt here. So I'm just describing here the house, as you can see. And I'll decrease a little bit the style and click Generate. And here we have more results. So let's have a look. So you can see that now we have some patches of dirt on the floor. The snow, it's not fully covered on these images because of the prompt. The prompt didn't add the word snow. I already have here one that had, and it, this was the result that it gave. So I'm pretty happy with this one. So I'm gonna go with this one and I'm clicking on the top right corner. And here you'll see HD Upscaler. So let's just click this one. And now on the bottom, you'll see creative options, low or high. I'm gonna set to high and I'm gonna leave it at natural. So we can paste here again the prompt and click generate. Here, just press OK to continue. And now you can see here the result. So you can see that it has much better details in this before and after, especially here on the snow. You can see on the road, you can see much better the details. And we can click again to upscale again. So we're gonna make it a step further. So do the same thing here. We don't even going to add a prompt and let's just see the result. And here's the result. So let's have a look and you can see even finer details this time on the image. We're going to use now this image and we will take it to Photoshop to do some editing. So now I have here both images in Photoshop. I have the main render and also I have the snow image. So on this snow image, I'm going to create a new mask and I'm going to paint it black. So we're just going to mask out the house here. And to do that fast, we can load in the color ID from the render, which each color represents a different material ID. So here I will just, with the selection tool, select all of these areas here from the house. So I'll do this quickly and then just fine tune the areas that uh, didn't select quite well. Okay, now that I have my selection done, I'm going to right click and select feather. Now I'm going to add a value of one and this is to have a more blur in the edges of the selection of just one pixel. First, I will inverse the selection and now I'll paint it with white. So now we see that we have the background of and the foreground of the snow, just the house it's from our initial render. And another thing I notice is that the grass is too green from the original render, and we can still see that see that grass. So one way to fix this 
is to control click on the mask and now we are going to the main render and we're going to add a new uh, UN saturation if adjustment layer and with a yellow selected I'm just going to desaturate it I'm also going to select the greens and do the same on the greens but the greens doesn't do much as you can see it's mostly yellow or the grass and the vegetation so with the yellows I'm just going to desaturate and make it a little bit darker and a little bit more to towards the blue as well so now I'm just going to mask out these areas that we can still see that are with this bright color and also on the windows we also see the reflection that has a lot of greens so we're just going to mask out these areas on the windows so it looks less saturated and doesn't catch so much attention and so activating back the layer with the snow this is what we have so far and now we can just paint a little bit of some areas from the uh, snow render mask out again these areas and so we can play around with this and see what fits best and now if you notice this house doesn't match quite well the environment so we are going to control select the mask and we'll add the color balance just to be affecting the house so in this color balance i'm just adjusting the values to match a little bit more of this snow environment so we don't have so much reflection of the greens as well so i'm removing those and another important thing to add it's a curves and i'm just going to adjust the curve like here like you see here and this is very important to have a little bit of that hazy feel more like a winter not so much contrast on the house you see that this makes a big big difference in the overall look and feel of an image in a snow environment and in the end i'm just going to add a new layer press ctrl shift e to merge all of the image into this new layer and i'll add a new camera raw filter here i'm just going to adjust the settings because this way i'm adjusting to the whole image together now and so this is the final result we can see that quickly we can turn a summer render into a snowy one so this is a great way just to have an idea of how that image would look without actually having a lot of work redoing all the 3d environment this part is already too long so let me know in the comments if you would like a more in-depth tutorial on this tip so in the next tip we're going to replace 3d people with uh, realistic ones so we go to erase and replace and i already have here an image that i uploaded so it's a very basic image that will serve for this purpose and you can see that when we over the image it automatically selects parts of the clothing parts of the face and arm so we can just start selecting one element I think it's better than selecting all together. It works best if you select, for example, the face. And now let's just give here a prompt and say man, and let's see what it will give. And so we can see here already the results. I think the lighting, it's good, but I didn't really like this face. So what I'm going to do is do another one and say man's face. Here are some more results. I think this one looks quite nice, as you can see. And so what I'm going to do now is click on edit on the top left of the image and you see this uh, erase and replace so we're going to click it again so i'm going to use the new generation and create a new uh, generation for the shirt so here i'm just going to type white shirt and so here's the results you can see that the shirt looks quite nice you have much more wrinkles on the shirt the lining looks good so it's much better than the 3d one and now i'm going to go again to erase and replace with this new generation and on this one we're going to select here the trousers so we can just say here navy blue trousers and let's see the results and here are some results so it has more details so you can do this to all the parts of the body the, until you have the just right generations so the next feature we're going to explore is the hd upscaler so with this HD upscaler, you can upscale not only images, but also textures. So this is a good one. If you have a low resolution texture, you can upload it here. And then you can set the creative options. Let's leave it at low. And you can see here the result. So with low, it was not much difference, as you can see. So let's try it with a prompt this time and with high settings. So let's change to high. 
And now I'm going to give it a prompt. So it's just basically describing what I see on this texture. And so now here you can already see a big improvement. So we see that the texture is much sharper now. And we can always upscale again if you want to have even higher resolution. But sometimes it can be a little bit too smooth. So you see that now we have even bigger resolution, but some of the details I think were a little bit lost. They look a little bit smooth, as you can see here. And so let's now move to the next tip. The next thing we're going to explore is the image to video. So we can take any render that we made and turn it into animated video, which is quite interesting if you want to just create slow animations. So in this case, I'm going to select high because I don't have any character on animal here. And I simply press generate. And the video is done. Let's just press play. And you can see here the animation. It looks quite nice because it keeps into account the position of the elements like the island, for example. And you can always do another thing here. We can download this. And I am going to open Topaz Video AI. And with this one, we can upscale the video. Here on the right side, I'm going to select 60 frames per second. And I'm going to do two times upscale. So it will be almost full HD. Then I just press export. I leave all the other settings by default. So usually it takes about, for this size, about one minute to make the render. And this is the final animation. So you can see that very quickly we can make this type of animations. It's still in beta, so of course there's still work to do. But it's great that we can see already this type of results happening because it will save a lot of time on a daily basis. So first let's go here to Outpainting on the left side. And now I'll just drag and drop the image to upload it. You can just press continue here. And you can see if you drag these handles, you can adjust the size of the image and the area that you want to be generated, the new area. So in this case, I'm going to make it more or less this size. I think this is a good value. And here I'm just going to keep it at original and I'm going to leave the prompt empty. Now you can see here the generations that it created. This one is not so great, but this one actually looks quite good. You can see here the before and after. The areas that generated the new ones are quite decent, but we can try another one, but this time with a prompt. So I'm just going to add this prompt, a modern living room with a large TV, comfortable couch and a well-lit window. So generate again. And here are the results. You can see in this before and after how it turned out. So you can see all of these little details that it added and it looks quite nice. I actually think this one is the best, to be honest. And you can do a full download. And when you open the image, if we zoom in, you can see all of these details that it added on the shelf, the plant, on the right side, even the pillows. So I think it did actually a pretty good job. Another case would be if you want to extend an existing texture. So this one, for example, let's try it out put it right here in the middle and just simply generate. So you can see these options. So I think this one is a little bit better, but we can still improve this. So we are going to give it a prompt this time. So I'm going to say herringbone floor seamless. So it's a seamless texture, no repetition. And you can see already some results here. It looks quite nice. You can see it kept the pattern. So the result was quite, uh, quite good. And after this, we can still do the upscale again if we would like to have a better resolution. With these five tips, you can definitely save a lot of time on your client's work, but you still need to go from start to render on every project. Check out this video, which I shared my full process for how to do that effectively with Prom AI. And that's all for today. I'll see you in the next one.